Irish mythology stems from the tales and legends of the ancient Celts. While the Romans pretty much obliterated the Celts from Europe, small vestiges survived in Brittany, Cornwall, Wales, and Scotland, and of course, Ireland. These populations managed to preserve the ancient stories through oral tradition, giving us a glimpse into the mythology and folklore of the enigmatic Celts. Number 1. Finn McCool and the Salmon of Knowledge Finn McCool, also known as Finn McCool, was the legendary Irish warrior who led a band of fighters known as the Fianna. Irish mythology falls into four cycles, and the tales of Finn McCool fall into what is known as the Fenian Cycle which revolves around the stories of the Fianna and the life of Finn McCool. While there are many stories about Finn McCool, perhaps the most popular is the tale of the Salmon of Knowledge. The story goes that swimming in the River Boyne was a magic fish known as the Salmon of Knowledge. It was said that the first to taste the fish would be imparted with all knowledge. There was a poet called Finnegus who lived near the Boyne, and although he was wise, he wanted to catch and eat the salmon. After seven years of trying, Finnegus had still not hooked the salmon when Finn McCool came to live with him. One day, Finnegus caught the most beautiful shining salmon and immediately knew this was the salmon of knowledge. Finnegus instructed Finn to cook the salmon but told him he wasn't to eat the fish, not even a mouthful. Finn built a fire and began to cook the salmon, but as he did, he burnt his thumb on the fish and instinctively put it in his mouth to relieve the pain. When Finn brought the meal to Finnegus, Finnegus recognized the wisdom behind Finn's eyes, and he knew he had been the first to taste the fish. Now, Finn was the wisest man in Ireland and became a great leader and warrior. Number 2. The Cattle Raid of Cooley The Cattle Raid of Cooley is from the Ulster Cycle of Myths. This tale revolves around the warrior Queen Meave, or Maeve, and her husband, Aelil. Queen Maeve was known for her resilience and strength and wielded enormous power. Queen Maeve chose Aelil Machmada as she found him to be without meanness, jealousy, or fear. The story starts with Maeve and Aelil disputing their respective wealth. They began to compare their possessions and commanded their servants to gather all their jewelry, gold, fine clothes, animals, and other valuables to see who benefited most from their union. Once all the possessions were laid out, they agreed that the only thing Aelil possessed that Maeve did not was Finbinok, a great white-horned bull. Maeve begrudgingly agreed that this was the one thing she could not match. In fact, there was only one bull in the whole of Ireland that could rival Finbinok, a bull that belonged to Dara Machfiachna of Ulster. Maeve was determined not to be outdone by her husband and asked Dara to loan her the bull for one year. In return, Maeve offered her friendship, 50 heifers, a plot of land, and a chariot. Dara was thrilled and immediately accepted this generous offer. He invited the messengers who had delivered the proposal to drink and celebrate with him. Unfortunately, some of Maeve's envoys got drunk and were heard saying that if Dara had refused, they would have stolen the bull anyway. Furious, Dara dismissed the messengers the following day and refused to hand over the bull. Maeve was not happy when her envoys returned empty-handed and decided to take the bull by force. So Maeve and Aelil began amassing their armies for all-out war. Maeve was very confident that she would be successful, as some of the greatest warriors in the country were at her command, and the warriors of Ulster were suffering from a curse. The men of Ulster had mistreated the goddess Maka, as she had cursed them with an unusual plight. Called the Pangs of Ulster, she had decreed that every year for several days, the men of Ulster would be incapacitated by the same pain that women felt while in labor. The curse had come about as Maka had been forced to run a race against a horse despite being in labor. She won the race, gave birth to twins on the finish line, and cursed nine generations of Ulster men to suffer labor pains every year. However, before Maeve and her army set off, a fortune teller called Fidelm told Maeve of a terrifying vision. Her prophecy foretold that a young warrior named Kukulain would defeat Maeve's army. Maeve reached Ulster unopposed due to the Ulster warriors being incapacitated, but there was one warrior who could defend the province, 17-year-old Kukulain. As soon as the army had reached Ulster, Kukulain began picking off hundreds of Maeve's men with his slingshot, dispatching more by hunting down stray troops. Maeve tried offering Kukulain anything he wanted if he would switch sides, but Kukulain refused. 
However, he did promise to stop attacking the army if Maeve would not act until he was beaten and allowed her to send one warrior every day to try and take him down. Maeve agreed, confident she would find someone to best this young lad. Predictably, Kukulain defeated any man whom Maeve threw at him. As she was running out of men, Maeve got Kukulain's foster father, Fergus, to step up. However, when Fergus got to the battlefield, Kukulain found he could not bring himself to fight his foster father. So Kukulain yielded, and Fergus promised to return the favor in the future. Maeve then manipulated Kukulain's foster brother, Ferdia, into fighting. The brothers were both trained by the famous Scottish female warrior, Skaha, and were evenly matched. They both also owned magical armaments, with Kukulain possessing a spear known as Giabolga, and Ferdia wearing armor that no ordinary weapon could pierce. The battle raged for days, but eventually Kukulain was forced to use his spear and killed Ferdia. Distraught and injured, Kukulain retired to rest and heal. Meanwhile, Maeve had stolen the bull and attempted to flee Ulster when the men recovered from their pangs and took up arms. A battle ensued, and Kukulain could see Fergus advancing. Kukulain threw off his bandages and took to the battlefield. Facing Fergus, who fought for Maeve, he called in his favor, after which Fergus and his men left the fight. Maeve managed to retreat with the bull and took it back to her kingdom to assess if this bull was better than her husband's. The two bulls fought on Targa Hill, with the brown bull of Ulster eventually killing Finbinok, before returning to its homeland where it died. Number 3. The Children of Lear This story is from the mythological cycle, which is the earliest cycle of Irish mythology and is probably the best known story from this cycle. The story starts with Lear, an Irish sea god whose name means sea in Old Irish. He and his wife, A, have four children, but A dies giving birth, leaving Lear a widow. He then marries A's younger sister, Aoife. At first, Aoife dotes on her stepchildren, but seeing their father's unquestionable affection for them, she grows jealous and turns them into white swans for 900 years. The swans spend 300 years on the lake of Derevark, where their father sets up a settlement to be near his children. Although they outlive him, the swan children's life on the lake isn't too bad, all things considered. The next 300 years are spent on the stormy sea of Moyle, where the terrible weather forces the siblings apart. They spend their final 300 years on a small lake on the Isle of Inisglora, where they find that the life and civilization they once knew is long gone. The spell is broken when they hear Christian bells ringing. The siblings turn back into their human form, but begin aging immediately and are christened by a Christian missionary moments before they die. Given that the Celts originated before the spread of Christianity, it seems likely that the story of the children of Lear once had a different ending and was changed to reflect new beliefs. Swans are a common theme of folktales and are usually associated with transformations, often depicted as shapeshifters or cursed humans. Another Irish folktale involves swans, in which a Scandinavian princess falls in love with the Irish hero Cuculain and transforms herself into a swan to fly across the sea. Number 4. The Legend of the Giant's Causeway this myth is another tale that centers around Finn McCool and also shows the links between the Irish and Scottish Celts. In this story, Finn, who is a giant, becomes enraged that a Scottish giant named Benendoner claims that Ireland belongs to him. Finn starts throwing boulders into the sea off the northern Irish coast and decides to use them to create a causeway to Scotland to challenge Benendoner. Benendoner gets wind of what Finn is up to and starts to do the same intending to create a path from Scotland. Soon, Ben and Donner gets tired of the work and has a nap. Finn catches sight of Ben and Donner for the first time and realizes that he is absolutely huge, much too big for Finn to take on in a fight. He quickly retreats to Ireland and hatches a plan with his wife. Knowing that Ben and Donner could use the causeway to come to Ireland, Finn's wife disguises her giant husband as a baby. Ben and Donner arrives and, seeing how large Finn's baby is, beats a hasty retreat. As he does, he tears up the causeway so that Finn cannot follow him and hides in Fingal's cave on the Isle of Staffa. The giant's causeway is actually about 40,000 interlocking basalt columns on the northern coast of Northern Ireland that formed naturally as a result of an ancient volcanic fissure eruption. The Scottish side of the causeway is on the uninhabited Isle of Staffa in the Inner Hebrides of Scotland. It is still known as Fingal's Cave, 
and the same basalt columns can be seen, forming a natural walkway that allows visitors to go inside the cave at low tide. Number 5. Tua de Danan Legend had it that the Tua de Danan were supernatural beings of the goddess Danu, the most ancient of the Celtic gods. Although no myth exists about Danu, experts believe she represented the earth and fertility. The Tua de Danan arrived in Ireland by emerging from a great mist, and in some tales they came on flying ships surrounded by dark clouds that blotted out the sun for three days. They burned their boats to ensure they would settle in this new land and challenge the island's current inhabitants, the Fir Bolga, or Bag People, to battle. The Tua de Danan won, but allowed the Fir Bolga to stay in Connaught out of respect for how valiantly they had fought. The Tua de Danan brought a new culture to Ireland and had four great treasures. The Stone of Fowl, which would scream when the true King of Ireland stood on it. The Magic Sword of Noor, which would always kill its opponent when used the slingshot of the sun god Lug, which was deadly accurate, and the cauldron of Dagda, which supplied an endless amount of food. Eventually, the Milesians arrived in Ireland from Iberia and defeated the Tua de Danan. It was agreed that the Tua de Danan would rule the underworld of Ireland, and they were led there by Mananan, the god of the sea. The Tua de Danan were shrouded in mist and hidden from the eyes of the people of Ireland, becoming Ireland's fairy folk. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about Irish history, check out our book, Irish History, A Captivating Guide to the History of Ireland. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you found the video captivating, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.